Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and I've been called out to this house, which is barely 10 years old, to look at a problem that I've seen hundreds of times before. In fact, all through my working life, I've been looking at this problem and solving it. Now, it's something that's a bit of a national epidemic, so much so that you're bound to know somebody who has this very problem in their home, whether it's a new build or an old build. And to me, that's a complete tragedy because the technology exists to avoid it completely in the first place, but it's not being done. And that's something of a national scandal. And to show you what this problem is, I'm gonna take you inside and I'm also gonna show you how to fix it once and for all. So here it is. This is a very familiar scenario for me. I've seen countless examples of this, almost a national epidemic. Now, the problem is that a lot of people, they get somebody in, they strip it all out, they put new, water resistant plasterboard back in, retile and think the problem solved. And of course, a few years down the line, it's happening again. I've even known houses where they've done that three times and then in despair, they've called in somebody to do the job properly. Now they say that if you want a different result, you have to change your behavior, keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result, nonsense. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a system which gives us belt and braces. It gives us three levels of sealing on this so that we can make sure this never happens again. When we leave this job, it's done for good. Having said that I've seen this countless times before, I found that it's always dangerous to jump to conclusions. In other words, if you see this kind of thing and you think, ah, oh, I know what that is. That's a leak around the bottom, around the tray. Maybe the silicon seal has broken down or it's come through the grouting. That's not necessarily the case. I've known it to be the shower valve that's leaking and dripping down and causing that problem. So what you have to do is you have to carry out a very thorough examination to make sure that you're actually attacking the right problem. But in this case, I can see clearly that this is plasterboard, the cheapest of cheap, even though this is a lovely house, very expensive, beautiful house. On the face of it, they've used the cheapest component they can and quite honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this isn't happening to every single house on this estate. At some time or another, the building's gonna move, the cracks are gonna open up, and that water is going to get in. I was thinking that this would be about the limit because you can see that it's dry here and it's wet there. But what's to stop the tiles cracking above here or the grout cracking? Because if you look at this, this is just a bit of stud work that is put flat ways on. So there's no structural strength in it. Now if you put bits on, well, they obviously cut it. it. The whole thing is absolutely terrible. I mean, let's remember that this is a half a million pound house, all right? And this is what you get. I mean, not only is the plasterboard, you can see, just not up to the job, you never tile on that. If anybody's trying to persuade you to use plasterboard in a shower area, then chuck them off the job because it's just not the material to use. So what I'm tempted to do is carry on up because what I don't want to do is have a join in this wall where we've got a weak area where the water can start to flood in and go behind that element's board. Okay, you can see that I've managed to get the tiles off. I'd like to tell you that I've got them all off intact and that we can reuse them, but I actually broke one of them getting it off, quite a difficult one. And that now leaves us in the position of whether to go for new tiles or try and just replace. We're never gonna replace that one, so we'd have to hide it. So I favor the new tiles. Now, we've left this wall intact because it's actually onto masonry, so it's a lot more sound, but you can actually use this elements board that I'm going to use onto masonry, dot and dab it on as if it were plasterboard, and that would give you the perfect surround. But 
In this case, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna concentrate on this wall where all the trouble has been. You can see that up here, it's quite dry. So we could have got away with it, joining it, I guess. But do you know what else I discovered? Look at this, look. This is the shower valve mounted on the pipework. Now, the regulations, the water regulations say that you should never have the pipework supporting the fitting. The fitting can support the pipework, but not the other way around. And all the guy had to do was put a bracket in here to hold that pipe steady and a piece of plywood across the back. He's got four fixing holes. The shower valve manufacturers provided four fixing holes for that valve. So that's a clue, isn't it? But no, did he do it? He couldn't be bothered. But I'm afraid it's happening all over the country in new homes and old simply because the installers can't be bothered to do the job properly. Could say it's work for the future, but it's not work I want. On some occasions, I've gone to jobs like this and the whole thing has got dry rot behind it. It's gone into the walls. We've had to do a complete rip out. I've even had to rip out joists in a bathroom before because they've been infected with the dry rot. So these things are serious. A little leak that occurs behind the shower can go on and on and on and do untold damage, which obviously ends up in an insurance claim. But in this case, I think we saved it, we got there in time, and we're ready to begin putting the elements board on and getting this back to a waterproof wall ready for tiling onto. Now, I'm just gonna level with you here because I've been having some discussions with the homeowner and we were talking about this space and the way it is and the fact this is raised up and there's really no need. This could have a rectangular shower tray in here, a walk-in shower with a single piece of glass, no door, and it would make a nicer use of this space. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this board back so tidy the whole thing up again and it's ready for tiling. And if we do decide we're going to change this tray to a rectangular tray, that can still be done. Everything I've done there can stay so that's ready and we'll just carry on. But if we do that, we'll come back and do that as a separate video. This is the elements board from Abacus that we're going to use for the rest of this job. Now this is an insulated board. You can see the insulated core there. And that material is completely waterproof. If you put that in a bucket of water, as I've done, leave it there for six months, a year, take it out, it doesn't weigh anymore. It hasn't absorbed any water at all. So on both sides of it, this is polymer-based material, kind of almost a cement, if you like, and that's onto a mesh. Now, this is the ideal surface for tiling onto. Honestly, it doesn't get any better than that. So once we've put this on the wall, we've got a completely waterproof surface and that is vapour proof as well because don't forget a lot of the damage that happens in bathrooms is due to the water vapour, the steam getting through and just beginning to attack that paper face plasterboard and turn it to mush. So with this material that won't happen because of this insulated core, it actually warms up the surface of the tiles so that the tiles become more like the room temperature, if you like, so you don't get so much condensation, therefore you don't get so much mold on the ground. Honestly, I've done so many jobs where I've seen the difference between two walls, one that's got this on and one that hasn't, and you can see the difference in the, the mold on the ground.
So that's it, that's the elements board on the wall now and you can see how easy that is to work with and how easy it is to fix on the wall. I have heard people say in the past there used to be a bit of an obsession with using marine ply in showers. People used to think that for some reason, I suppose the clue's in the name, marine ply, that it was good for boats, it would be good for, for showers. It's not, because if you tile onto timber and you get any moisture creeping in behind there, it sets up a mold growth and all the tiles fall off. Plus, the preservatives that they put in the marine ply tend to leach through on the grout lines so that you finish up with these orange grout lines on your lovely new tiling. So never ever use marine ply, never ever listen to anybody who says they want to use marine ply. And as you can see, if you were doing that with ply sheet, you'd be up and down to the circular saw, cutting it. This is just something you can use on site. So if you're working in a block of flats or anything like that, absolutely brilliant. Now it's lightweight and some people worry about that. They think, oh, surely that's not good enough to support the tiles, but it will support huge tiles. So you haven't got to worry about using a large format tile on it. If you think of carbon fiber and that mesh and that way that works, this is the same sort of deal. It's got mesh on both sides of it. It's firm. Once you've fixed it, it's firm. And once you put those tiles on top, you won't know that it's not a solid brick wall. So really is a great material to use. I can't recommend it enough. It's British made. It comes from Abacus. And now I'm going to show you the next stage of their solution to make sure that you get a completely waterproof substrate to tile onto. Now life is just beginning to get a little bit more complicated for me because the customers have just decided, they've just finalized the decision, they want me to take this tray out, they want me to put that long tray in and put a new screen in. So we're gonna do that, but because I want to show you how to finish this system off, even though we're not gonna use this tray, I'm just gonna show you how to fit this No More Leaks kit which is what you would do if you were carrying on doing this as a remedial job, but you'd also do this if you're putting in a new shower tray. Now some shower trays have a little upstand behind them to prevent leakage behind them, but as you can see, this one didn't work very well. And sometimes they can be a bit of a nuisance because it means you've got to carve out the back of the board or you've got to cut the back of the tile out to stop it kicking out on an upstand. So you're better off just getting a plain tray with no upstands and using this kit around the whole perimeter, which is what I'm gonna do when I fit the new tray, which will be in the next video. But bear with me on this. For this one, I'll show you how to fit this No More Leaks sealant around the bottom here. And you can see here that we've got a gap where the tiles are not quite meeting the board there. Obviously, when I put the new tiles on, that gap will be closed, but we need to get this into the corner. Now, in actual fact, we've decided that because this is a, a plastered wall, this is a masonry wall, it's pretty solid. We're going to leave these tiles on the wall and we're going to tile over the top. Now, a lot of people don't know that you can tile over the top of tiles. So long as those tiles are firmly fixed on the wall, there's no need to scratch them up, just clean them off, make sure they're absolutely spotless, no grease, no soap. And then you can use a tile adhesive to tile straight on top of the tiles. Now, if you doubt that, I've actually been to the laboratory, Unibond laboratory, where they test the tile adhesives and they've done a test putting tile on tile and they've got a machine that grabs it and tries to pull it apart. And it is one of the best surfaces to tile onto. So it's not a compromise. You can see that round the pipework here, we've put a small gasket to make sure that no water seeps back through there into the, the void. And also around the shower valve itself, 
We've put another bit of gasket. I'm going to finish that off with a bit of MD sealant and then put the cover plate on, on top of the tile. So we've got three layers of protection there to stop any water getting through. So that should be enough. And also, you might think this is a bit of overkill up here. I've put some Pro Seal and some covers over the screws, which are way above the water line. You'd never expect to get water up there. But the reason I've done that is because it's not only about stopping splashing or leaking water. It's about stopping water vapor getting through because when a bathroom gets full of steam and that moisture starts to migrate through, we don't want moisture finishing up at the back. So this way, this, this is good for steam rooms as well, by the way. This way, we make sure that we've covered every single eventuality. And I can absolutely guarantee to the customer that they won't have any more of this kind of problem in the future. I'm Roger Bisby. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to come back to Skill Builder soon because we're going to be doing the second half of this job and we've got lots more plumbing and bathroom stuff coming up as well for you. So if you're wondering about any of the tools or the materials that I've used in this project, all the links for those various items are in the description below.